Hi, it's Lindley Oz, and it's been a while since I've uploaded anything or recorded, and you'll have to forgive me. I came home from Oklahoma and immediately got sick with the nastiest flu I think I've ever had in my entire life. I had a temperature of 103. I was down for days. I'm over it, but I still have the head cold aspect of it. So if you notice that, I'm sorry, I can't help it. But I just don't feel like I should go another day without recording something. And I have some things that have been on my heart that I wanted to share with you. You know, we're going into the busy holiday season. We just had Thanksgiving and now Christmas is coming once again. My goodness, it doesn't even seem like a long time since last Christmas. It just goes faster and faster every year. I think there are many of us who have had the worst year of our lives this past year. Although one year is not limited to numbers, it can also be a span of time. So many of us will be happy to start fresh as we reflect back on the happenings of this year in our lives, the things that we accomplished, the things that we didn't accomplish, the things we hoped to accomplish, and maybe there are things we're still working on. You know, people always talk about those New Year's resolutions each and every year, but how many of us actually fulfill those? Maybe we're all gung-ho at first, and then slowly we get caught up in other things. Now, you can see here on the screen clearly that I am on the Hal Lindsey Report. Hal Lindsey was a huge inspiration in what I'm doing today. When I was a little girl, many of you who have followed me for some time have heard me say this in my videos. I was literally obsessed with Bible prophecy. I loved Bible prophecy and obviously I still do. So I shouldn't say loved as in past tense, but I would sit in my room and read my mother's prophecy books and read the Bible. And I had these little promise cards that were in a box. They were Bible verses. I would pray and say, Lord, speak to me today. So as I was sitting in my bedroom as a child, reading different things about Bible prophecy and looking at all the crazy drawings with people who had the number 666 stamped on their forehead, and of course, in a child's mind, it was like science fiction. I remember specifically reading Hal Lindsey's book, The Late Great Planet Earth. Many of us know Hal Lindsey as the godfather of Bible prophecy. So I wanted to go check out and see what his latest was. And I came across this article. It says, as the earth burns. It is a short article, but does it say a mouthful? And it really makes you think. It says the Bible gives us clear signs regarding the end of this age. With those signs being fulfilled on every side, the days of business as usual have gone away. And that is so true. As I reflect back on the 1980s and even the 1990s, things seemed so different. I don't know if it's just getting older. Maybe it is. I'm 46 years old now. Maybe that's a good part of it. I don't know, maybe it's just me. And I've mentioned this in other videos, but I just feel a sense of heaviness, a darkness, unrest. I don't know. It's like there's something missing, like this joy. Now, don't get me wrong. I know we have the joy in the Lord, and that's not what I'm talking about. In fact, I can't even really properly explain it. You have to be experiencing or have experienced this in order to understand, I guess. It's just like this darkness, this heaviness all over. You know, I was reading through the news and here in Ohio, not in the town I'm at, but pretty far away, as I was looking to see what was going on, I saw where some man who was a neighbor to this woman and she apparently was telling people that this guy was stalking her and she was scared. Lo and behold, the guy stabs the woman to death and burned down the house. Among the victims 
of course, was the mother who was stabbed to death and her small eight-year-old daughter whose body was found up inside of her bedroom. I can't even begin to imagine the torment that child faced as she either witnessed visually or heard her mother's screams. And they said that the child died of smoke inhalation before the fire got to her. But many of us listening have children and it's a horrible thought. Apparently the mother had an infant, but the infant was not in her care at the time. But has the world gone mad? And yeah, I know things like this have been going on for years and years. But it's those types of things that just makes you realize how strong the presence of evil and darkness is in this world. To think that any human being could do something like that to another human being. Just the things that we see in the news. And those are the types of things I avoid in the news because it just really, really upsets me. But it was right there in my face, like the first thing at the top of the Apple News page. Pretty disturbing. You think about that woman's family and the child, and it's just very sad. You think about all the people out west in California who are losing things, who have lost loved ones, who have lost valuable things to them, who are homeless, who are injured. And you just look at all the tragedy going on around the world and it just really makes you want to cry. And as you're looking around at the tragedies, you think about how we're losing our freedoms. It's not the same America that it used to be. Not at all. Nothing is the same anymore. It really isn't. And I understand why we need the Lord even more than ever. There's lots of reasons we need the Lord. But I tell you that there are days I don't think I could wake up and face another day without the Lord by my side. I really, I really don't think I could. And not just by things that I see in the news but just things that go on in my own life. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure many of you listening are going through something or you've been through something and you wake up in the morning and you're in tears and you just ask the Lord, why? How come? What did I do? Is there something I've done wrong? Are you mad at me? What is going on, Lord? What is going on? It reminds me of Job. (laughs) How must Job have felt when he gave thanks to God every day, even sacrificed for his children's sins every day? He was full of wealth. He never took his wealth or his riches for granted. He always knew and was grateful that it was from the Lord. And then all of a sudden, in one day, he lost everything he had, including his children. He had boils all over his body. And, of course, you know the story about all of his different friends who gave him their opinion of things. But God had told the devil, you can do whatever you want, but you can't harm a hair on his head. In other words, you can't have his life. You can make him wish that he was dead, but you cannot take his life. Do you ever feel like Job some days? Well, maybe not to that extent, but sometimes, some days, it just feels pretty bad. And then we tell ourselves and remind ourselves What the Bible says, that nobody knows the mind of God. God's ways are not our ways. And we try to put our best foot forward and and to have faith and believe. But what about those times where nothing goes your way? 
Like you would think out of at least five to ten of those things that maybe one of them, God might show you favor. Right? But then he doesn't. And then you're still wondering why. What about those times you're pretty sure you've heard from God? In fact, you're positive. And so you obey what you feel you've heard. And whatever you thought was going to happen didn't happen. And then by the end, you're scratching your head thinking, okay, maybe I didn't hear from God. But then I have to pause there because I'm reminded of the story in the Bible where God tells Abraham he is to sacrifice his son. And so Abraham obeys, ties his son all up. He's getting ready to sacrifice him when God tells him to stop and tells him not to do it. So in this instance, God did tell Abraham to do something. Abraham obeyed and did it. And just as he was about to follow through completely, God stopped him. I wonder how many times God tells us to do something and he just wants to see if we're going to obey. And as soon as we put the wheels in motion to do that thing, God changes the plan. Much for the same reason he did with Abraham and his son. Something to think about. We always think maybe we heard God wrong, but maybe we heard God right. Maybe God just wanted to see how obedient we would be. So now here I am. I've only gotten out one, two, two sentences out of this entire article. I apologize. Let's go ahead and see what the rest of it has to say. Because I'm sure how Lindsay has much greater things to say than Lindley Oz here. These are not ordinary times. Lethal strains of Islam, a primary destabilizing force in the world, have now taken over large portions of once Christian Europe. Tensions in the Middle East cannot be contained there. They threaten to explode into a third world war. Meanwhile, Europe seems intent on empowering Iran, the most dangerous nation on earth. When nuclear war looms, we can no longer afford to be obsessed with the private lives of Great Britain's royal family. As people starve in Yemen, most Christians don't even realize it's happening. But many can tell you exactly what the Kardashians are up to. Isn't that the truth? You can't go to the store for years without something about the Kardashians in your face, particularly something about their date lives, their sex lives, their rear ends. I'm so tired of hearing about the Kardashians' butts and sex lives, I could vomit. Wealthy countries around the world are raising a generation with an unprecedented number of emotionally stunted individuals. Many of them can't look one another in the eye, don't have the patience to read books, and live their lives within the confines of a video screen small enough to fit in a pocket. How true is that? Most of our children and ourselves included, not just our children, live in the confines of a video screen small enough to fit in a pocket. I have to laugh every time I go someplace and I look around and everyone is holding their cell phone in their hand, scrolling, typing, and I do it too. Ask those who know me. I can be really bad about it because I'm trying to do all my work or communications while I'm with people and it's rude. I'm real bad at times. So when I laugh, I guess I have to include myself in that scenario and laugh at myself too. What on earth would we do without our little devices? Well, some of them have gotten bigger. Our phones. It seems we can't even have a social life or pay attention to people without texting or messaging something in the email or, or looking at something on our phones. It's really bad. Everything's so depersonalized. You don't have to say something meaningful to somebody anymore with your voice and have the voice inflection 
You don't have to deal with anything up front. All you have to do is send an email or a text. That's all you have to do. How does something like this affect our children and affect society overall? Again, I would be a liar and a hypocrite to not point out that I myself, Lindley Oz, am very, very bad about this very thing in which I'm discussing right here to do with cell phones. How rude is it if somebody's trying to talk to us, hang out with us, do things with us, and all we're doing is texting on our phones? Or we're in the middle of a conversation and we have to break loose from that conversation to text. Many videos ago, I did a, a video that shocked people because it was outside of my normal, in which I was being somewhat humorous in a dry way. But the video starts out, and I really didn't know what all I was going to talk about, and I was actually getting real text from people while I was recording the video. I had forgotten to turn my phone sounds off, but I went ahead and left that in there and actually sat and responded to the text while I recorded on purpose to make a point about that which I'm saying right now. I was trying to make the point of how many of us stop in the middle of something to text. And it was rude. It's very rude in the middle of a video to, to leave that in there and to stop and text. Again, I did that intentionally. I didn't get the text intentionally, but as I received a text, I thought, you know what? I'm going to make a point about texting and I'm going to read the text and tell everybody to hold on while I read the text and respond to it in order to make a point. And that point is we have depersonalized society. We have become rude and self-centered among many other things. Maybe it's something we ought to think about. But then can we? Is it habitual? Are we in this habit now of doing these things to where we can't seem to gain control and stop ourselves? Continuing on with Hal Lindsay's article, I'm not saying we should make the world's problems the constant focus of our attention, but I am saying that we need to be aware and realize that we can't go on with business as usual. More than ever, we need to draw close to the Lord. We need to change our focus from worldly trivialities to things eternal. Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength, not football or the latest must-see TV show. I'm not condemning football or other forms of entertainment, but we can't be obsessed with them. Those things will not give you strength in troubled times. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've heard pastors at churches in the past cut their sermon short because they had to hurry because the football game was going to start. No kidding. People revolve their lives around things. And it's not just sports. It could be your favorite TV show, a soap opera, an activity, anything. It doesn't have to be just football. Philippians 4.8 says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute. If there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things things. What are we dwelling on? What kind of things are we thinking about? You know, once a thought enters our mind, that's all it is. Now, what you do with that thought is where it really gets deep. As soon as you begin to dwell on that thought and think more about that thought, it has entered your heart now and taking root. So what types of things are you dwelling on in your mind? Because 
the Bible speaks all throughout about the heart. Many of us have a real heart condition. We ask God for things and we beg and plead for him to help us. And we wonder why we're not getting answers. Could it be that the thing that you're asking for, begging and pleading for, could it be that in your head you want this thing, but maybe there's a problem in your heart? Well, the heart is the seat of our emotion and our will. What's going on with your own emotion and will? Have you let go of something and given it to God? I mean, truly, not just in your brain in your head, but in your heart. Maybe you're still holding on to something in your will and you need to have the Lord do some heart surgery on you and help you with your will. What can we dwell on that is always true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, of good repute, along with excellent and praiseworthy? Perhaps the question is not what, but who? Only Jesus. Keep him at the center of your thoughts or keep him at the center of your heart. Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. In times like these, we need to draw close to him. Business as usual is over. The world cries out for the answer that we have in Jesus We will not give them that answer by mirroring their actions and attitudes. In other words, we're not going to be separate from the world or be different if we mirror the world. The time is short. Let's focus our thoughts on him, talk about him, and let him keep our minds in perfect peace. How do you keep your mind on Christ? Ask him to help. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So maybe the answer is to fix our mind on Jesus Christ. It's hard, isn't it? I know. Many of you out there, I've read your comments, your emails, You've heard me. We're all going through some real hard times. Many of us have that heaviness in our own lives that we sense and feel that just doesn't want to seem to let go. And we cry out to God about it. But I feel like the Lord is telling me that we have a heart condition. God's people right now, we have a heart condition. In the world, when we have a physical heart condition, they can be deadly. We have to go to a specialist. Some of us need heart surgery. Some of us have to take medications or will die. Well, a spiritual heart condition can also kill you. Usually it's a slow, agonizing, torturous death, an emotional death, a mental death, a death that affects us from every aspect of our lives. Do you have a spiritual heart condition? Is there a place in your heart that you really need the Lord to perform surgery on? What I'd like for all of you to do, if you don't have a Greek Hebrew concordance, I would like for you all to go to Blue Letter Bible, and I want you to look up verses on the heart, and then I want you to look up the Hebrew meaning, or the original word and meaning for heart, and I want you to study that because When I did that, it opened my eyes. It said the seat of our will, of our emotion. The heart has a brain of its own. The heart is void of reasoning. That's why oftentimes you may feel a certain way, 
But the brain in your head is saying, why do I feel this way? I know that this thing is bad or I know this thing is not good, but why do I feel this way? You ever have those times where your brain in your head and the one in your heart don't mesh? Well, in order for God to come in and do things sometimes, your head brain and your heart brain have to be in alignment. That means you have to surrender yourself. You have to surrender your own will and give it to God. And that can be very difficult and it can be frustrating and confusing to try to figure out how to do that because you want it so bad, but you don't know how. The Lord will show you. So I'll just leave you with that. Think about it. I think many of God's people today, right here and right now, have a spiritual heart condition. We really need to take it to the Lord because if you think it's bad right now, and it is, it's only going to get worse. And we really need to be in Christ and in his will and not on the outside because the outside is where it's going to be dangerous. So I just ask you to do some research and some study on the heart, the spiritual heart and the will, the human will, and God's will and surrendering to God. God bless all of you and keep praying for me as I pray for you. And if you feel led to give to the Lin Oz ministry, I just urge you to do so because I do need your help. I'm almost 100% viewer supported. So I do rely on your gifts to this ministry. The information is on the video screen and below the video. I do have a PayPal and that is lindleyoz at freedomnationnews.com. The link is below this video, and I do have a P.O. box. If you prefer a check or money order, you can make that out to Lynn Liaz. Again, your help and your support and your prayers are greatly appreciated. I need all those things, and I just uh, pray for you guys all the time. I know that many of you out there have a lot on your plate, and we're sisters and brothers in Christ. And we need to all lift each other up in prayer at all times and ask God to just really protect us and bless us and give us strength. God bless all of you and thank you so much.